Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 12.1 and 12.1.1 beta one has been out for a few days. Now I've been running different versions on different devices. I've got 12.1.1 beta one here and 12.1 here. I've got the beta on these two as well. Now I did put out a community poll, but I put it out a little bit late. So we're not going to have as many results on that by the time I'm recording this. I probably should have put it out early, but we did get the beta on Wednesday. So it was pretty late. So I wanted to give it a few days before we went anywhere with it. Now for me, it's been really good. I've got the same battery life I'm getting on, on the 12.1 version as I am on 12.1.1 beta one. And if we go here to battery, we'll wait for it to load. And on the 10 R, since this is what I've been using to review, you'll see, I hadn't used it much today, but if we look back over these other times we're getting pretty good battery life. Now the 10 R in general gets pretty decent battery life and you'll notice here four and a half hours, but that was at a little under 50% battery. So this is really doing pretty well on battery. I got the same exact results prior to the beta. So you'll see there, this is uh, right here where we got the beta and then it went right back up. Usually the day of the beta, it will go down with battery life. Now, as far as speed and stability, I've had no crashes, no issues whatsoever. I've had no freezes, no issues with settings locking up. So this has been pretty stable for me. As far as I can tell, all they did was change the stuff in, well, not the phone, but FaceTime. And on the older devices, I haven't had any issues. This is a 6S Plus as well, and this doesn't have a ton of things on it, but apps seem to load pretty quickly, just like you'd expect on these devices. And of course, it's a little bit older, and the app does take a minute to load. It hasn't been loaded in a while, and you'll see we're ready to go. So this app does kind of load slow to begin with, but in general, it's pretty good. You'll see it's working well. We'll move over to the 10s Max. Now, the 10s Max was the phone I used all the time until the 10 R came out because I haven't fully reviewed this yet, which I plan to do very soon. Uh, this device I've been using every single day to get a good idea what it's like. I actually like to give it a week to two before I actually release a review on it. So that I know exactly what it's like. It's not just another iPhone. It does have some quirks and differences and there will be some very similar things, obviously, but it's a little bit different now on this device. No issues. This is really fast anyway, but a lot of you were concerned about the speed on older devices because there were those stories about the iPhone 8, 8 plus and 10 being slowed down. I did a separate video about that. And I know a lot of you were concerned that iOS 12.1 will slow it down. And that's just not true. It's based on battery. So the battery as it degrades, it causes issues and basically the phone can't handle it. So it slows the, the phone down to deal with it. This usually happens a couple of years out, maybe even three years out. If it happens, you replace your battery. So check out that video. If you want to learn more about that, uh, I don't want to go into a ton more detail about it just because it's kind of well known at this point. And hopefully you saw my video of trying to explain some of that, but on the iPhone eight and eight plus, it still feels just as fast as these devices. If I go to, let's see what we have over here. We have monument Valley here too. I don't have a whole lot of games on these. I like to play games on the iPads, but you'll see it's going to load just nice and fast and smooth and we'll wait for it there. Now on the 10 R, like I said, I've been using it mostly here. I've had zero app crashes, zero freezes, and I'm pretty happy with beta one. Although beta one usually is a bad beta. It's been pretty good for me, but let's take a look at the YouTube community poll and see what you had to say. Now, after 12 hours, I apologize for getting this out a little bit late. We've had 635 votes, but we've had very similar results in the past. 61% said great, 4% terrible, 16% said, okay, but some bugs I didn't upgrade yet and just show me the results, please. So if we look through all of the comments there's 61 at this time, and I have read through all of them, but if we go down to the bottom, we'll see if we can skim over about 10 of them or so. And most of you are saying it's pretty good. Now, just because I didn't have issues doesn't mean other people haven't. There's still some people reporting issues with LTE and connectivity and that dropping. In fact, I get that probably a couple times a day from you either here or on Twitter. And that's unfortunate that that's happening. It's supposedly fixed. It's been fixed for me on the 10 R and the 10 S max. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but as far as this goes, many people are saying battery life is pretty okay. Performance decreased a little bit on the iPhone 10 R. 
I haven't seen that other than maybe the benchmarks by about 20 or something, but not really any real decrease. iPhone XS, 12.1 great battery life, great on the iPhone 12.1. 10, or iPhone XS Max 12.1. Battery life has never been good on my 7 Plus, and that's unfortunate because battery life is usually fantastic on a 7 Plus. Using an iPhone 10 on iOS 12.1, can't find any bugs. Some bugs. 8 Plus 12.1.1 on an SE. Both devices are fine, but some bugs. Still waiting for a miracle for the True Tone option, or wait to the trip to an Apple store. If you don't have True Tone, maybe you don't have a genuine Apple screen, and if that's the case... If it's a bug, you need to bring it in. But if you if you don't have True Tone because uh, you swap the display, uh, you probably won't get it back, unfortunately. 12.1 battery on my Verizon SE has been horrible. I get random chunks of battery percentage drops during use. Didn't get that on iOS 12.0.1. Uh, clean install generally won't happen with that. I would see if there's a specific app using that. Okay, on 8 Plus and iPad 2017. Oh, on my iPads, it's been fine. I've got the beta on one, and I don't have the beta on the other, and it seems to be fine. I'm, I am I notice no issues. It seems nice and smooth. Great on the 10s Max. Great iOS 12.1.1, running much better on my iPhone 8. I was going going a work meeting with group FaceTime, also much more stable. The phone does not heat up anymore. Some other people have been mentioning this as well. It's okay for your phone to heat up. There's a processor in it, and when a processor starts doing tasks, they will heat up just in general, sometimes more than others. But uh, just like any processor, like when I'm compressing video, when I make this video, my computer heats up quite a bit. Uh, that's just the nature of the way that works. But So I wouldn't get too concerned. Actually, iPhones are very heat sensitive. So if they get too hot, they'll tell you they're too hot and they won't allow you to do anything or they'll actually slow down a little bit. And uh, if they get too hot, they'll tell you it's too hot and it needs to cool down. Lagging animations on 12.1, but it was fixed on the beta. Battery life is decent, but still laggy on the iPhone SE. I like to see a lot of people using iPhone SEs. It looks like a lot of people upgraded and then they kept their old phone around, mostly SEs. iPhone 7 Plus, iPad Pro, iPad 6 Gen, some bugs on them. I'd love to know what those bugs are. Great on my new iPhone XS Max, really smooth, nothing to complain about. Great, great, great. Like I said before, iOS 12 is awesome as long as future updates keep speedy and efficient. Let's hope we won't have a repeat of slow major iOS release again. Yeah, we probably will at some point. Pocophone S1, F1. I had some apps crashing on my iPhone 10. Great. Okay, my iPhone 6, but battery life is the worst. Still at 100% battery. Health, I think is what you mean there. I'm running 12.1.1 on the Tennis Max, and I've had a few connection issues and a couple of crashes. Battery life seems okay. Battery life good on the iPhone 6S Plus. I'm not seeing a whole lot of iPhone 6s in here, so let's see if anyone else voted. Oh, one person since then. But in general, I think it's pretty safe to upgrade. If you're on 12.1 and you don't want to deal with betas, stay on there, of course. Uh, the beta seems okay, but if you want stability, stick with that. You're not really losing anything because the features that you get with the FaceTime update with 12.1.1 beta, uh, you need the you need to actually have that version on the other phone as well that you're talking to in order to use some of those features. So you might as well just wait probably... At this rate, probably until the end of the month or early next month before we see a final release. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to see any more videos that you're not finding anywhere else, I'd love to hear any of your suggestions in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. Oh, as always, the wallpaper will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>